some of those sneaky little prostaglandins can like make their way over to the bowel. Hi Brat Girls, it's Demi here and today I'm going to answer the most googled questions about periods. So I've got my laptop here um, and we're just going to get straight into it. So the first question is, why do periods smell so much? Getting right into it guys. The reason why period blood can smell is that it's exposed to oxygen. Now that's another reason why it can also turn brown. So there's an extra um, answer there for you. When the period blood is exposed to oxygen, it can start to smell. And that's why if you don't change a pad or tampon um, every couple of hours, it can start to smell because it sits there um, and is exposed to more oxygen. It's also a damp and not sanitary environment for bacteria to bleed. So guys, Change your tampons in pads frequently. Don't be the stinky kid. And this is also why when you wear a menstrual cup, your period blood doesn't actually smell. Because what the period cup does is seal off the blood from oxygen, um, so it doesn't actually start to smell. When you take out your menstrual cup, that blood actually doesn't smell. So just another reason to love the menstrual cup. So the next question is, why do periods sink? And they don't. <laughs> when your period comes, when each person's period comes, really depends on them what's happening in their body even what's happening in their life can impact the timing of their period for instance stress can delay ovulation which can in turn delay their period now if you hang around someone long enough of course at some point just because everyone's period is not perfectly 28 days every single month if you've known someone for years then chances are likely that because we have varying different length period cycles that every once in a while you guys might be on your period at the same time but spending time with someone doesn't make your period sync up because it all has to do with the timing of ovulation and what's happening on the inside and nothing to do with who you're hanging around. The next question is why do periods happen and if that's something that you really want to learn more about then you can grab my book The Bright Girl Guide. It explains it all in a lot of depth but my short answer for right now is because your uterus builds up the lining called the endometrium. That's essentially the wall or the lining of our uterus and it builds that up with our period blood and some like mucus and white blood cells. It builds that up in order to prepare for a potential pregnancy so an egg can implant into that cozy endometrium lining. But when your body realizes that it's not pregnant, it's like, well, I don't need that lining I just built up and it sheds it. And that's why we get our period. The next one is why do periods come late? I've done a video all about that. You can go watch that. I will link it down below. Why do periods hurt so much? Now there's a few answers to this question. First of all, why do we get cramps and pain on our period? Um, we produce around the time of our period something called prostaglandins and I've actually done a whole other video on this as well so you can go and watch that. But these prostaglandins helps our uterus to contract so that we can push the period blood out of our body and those little contractions can, they're kind of like little muscle cramps if you get a cramp in your leg or your arm, they're kind of like little muscle cramps. Now some people can produce more prostaglandins than others which can cause more cramping, more inflammation and more pain. Um, another reason is that we have more sensitive pain fibers in and around our uterus at that time of the month. So we're going to feel something. There's things moving, there's things happening, we're going to feel something. However, we shouldn't be feeling excruciatingly severe period pain. That's actually not the typical, even though it might be common. Um, so for people who have really severe period pain, some of the causes can include a hormone imbalance. Now hormones might be imbalanced for a range of different reasons and each individual person needs to seek out what those reasons are with a health professional. Um, other health conditions can actually impact your period pain and your levels of pain and make it worse. So if you're battling another illness in your life that can also impact your hormones and your period pain. Conditions like fibroids, endometriosis and even PCOS 
PCOS can also impact someone's period pain. So if you've got really severe period pain and you've had it for years and it's just not letting up, it's a really great idea to chat with a women's health professional and investigate potentially some of these reproductive health conditions because once you figure out if you do have them, that illuminates the path forward to actually get rid of a lot of that pain. Sometimes um, it's easier for some than others in terms of minimizing their pain. But what I love to say is that there's always something you can do to better your health and there's always something you can do to help your period. Even though each person is individual and unique and one person might be able to get rid of a lot of their pain and one person might not. But there's always something we can do to have a better period, um, which is really empowering. Okay, <laughs> why do periods stop in water? They don't. Why do periods make you poop? So remember I mentioned those prostaglandins that help your uterus to kind of contract and push out the blood? Well, some of those sneaky little prostaglandins can like make their way over to the bowel, especially if you're producing more prostaglandins than average. And those prostaglandins can have the same impact on the bowel, causing it to contract and causing you to poop more on your period. Now here's the thing, this doesn't give you an excuse to have diarrhea on your period and just be like, it's fine. If you're having like chronic diarrhea or persisting poop problems, then address it. Don't just use your period as an excuse to be like, meh, I'm fine. Let's go to how do periods. I don't like any of these. So I just typed in periods and we've got a few of the most Google questions. So how does a girl feel when she's on her period? This differs from person to person. Don't feel like you have to feel like something just because somebody else does or one month you might feel great on your period and the next you might not feel so good. And that's because our period and the way that we feel around that time is impacted by so many different factors. Social factors, so maybe you've been like fighting with your friends or your family, or maybe that's been really good. That can impact how much period pain, how much moodiness or PMS that we experience that month. It could be mental factors. So if you've had a really tough month mentally, that can make your period experience a little bit um, less fun than if you've had a really good month mental health wise. Um, and physical factors can impact it as well. So have you been sick? Have you been exercising well? Have you been eating well? All of these things can impact the way we experience our period. And I encourage you to try and have the best period possible by making good choices where you have that control. So exercising well, eating well, getting enough sleep and getting good quality sleep and avoiding environmental toxins, uh, which is really important. You can learn so much more about that on my Instagram and maybe I'll eventually do a video here about that too. All right, how long does the period last? Usually it's four days to seven days. So a really short period of one, two, three days is not typical. And a period that lasts longer than seven days is not typical either. You wanna aim for that four to seven days. Uh, one question is just, heavy periods, which is not a question, but let's talk about heavy periods. Why do they happen? Estrogen is a hormone that is in charge of building up the lining of our uterus. You can learn a lot more about estrogen and its role in the body in my book, The Bright Girl Guide. It teaches you about a whole bunch of different hormones, estrogen, progesterone, FSH, LH, androgens, testosterone, and how they all impact our body and why it's so important that they're in balance. So with estrogen, its job is to build up the lining of our uterus, which ends up being our period blood that is shed when we have our period um, bleed. Now, if we have heightened, elevated levels of estrogen, we can actually be building up um, that lining a lot thicker and then have a heavier period. This can be impacted by things like our diet and nutrition. So if we're eating poorly for our hormones, then that's gonna impact how heavy our period is. It can also be impacted by lifestyle factors. So the toxins that we're exposed to, what we put on our skin, um, even what we put, wash our hair with, what we wash our face with, the air that we breathe and the water that we drink. A lot of the times people with a lot of period symptoms will be um, 
will be recommended to drink filtered water. And if you're in a job perhaps where you have to be breathing in a lot of chemicals, that can really impact your hormone balance as well. So for heavy periods, someone might want to work with a health professional at balancing their hormones. Um, other things that can cause heavy periods are conditions like PCOS and endometriosis and fibroids as well. All right, we're gonna leave it at that today. Let me know if you want me to do a part two of the most Googled period questions. And if you want to learn more about periods, there's lots on the Bright Girl Health Instagram and there's the Bright Girl Guide, my book, which is available in paperback and it's available in ebook for a cheaper option if you would love to read on your phone, which let's be honest, I like reading on my phone, but the paperback version is beautiful too. Let me give you a sneak peek, ready? It's really beautiful. There's lots of pictures and graphs to make understanding your hormones a whole lot easier so that you can use your period to your advantage, which we can't listen to our body and use it as our superpower if we don't know the language that it speaks to us. So in this book, I teach you all about how to understand the language our body speaks to us through our period. All right, guys, I will see you in my next video or over on the Bracker Health Instagram. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 My book, The Bracco Guide, is officially available. It is all about you understanding your menstrual cycle and your hormones.